Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss Talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not nothing, my damn Hey, man, we out here in Los Angeles, man. Um, enjoying the. the the air, like in Texas, you either hot or either you cold. It ain't no in between. <laughs> but out here, man, they got it going on, man. Say, man, we got a special guest, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, that don't really need no introduction, man. You've seen it, man. Hey, every time you think about, I think about something different than other people. I think about entrepreneurship because when you really look at it, that's what we all about. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My guy, Freeway, is in the house, man. Freeway, the real Rick Ross, man. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Man, it's man. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> man, I man, I I knew that if I was gonna come and do an interview uh in, in uh California, I, I definitely had to interview you. You know what I mean? I had I, I, we've been in a few places uh together and I knew you were there, I seen you in passing at Magic a few years back and I was like, Man, I didn't have this I just had this podcast six months, right? Okay. So I was bringing young kids out and showing them how to do business and get you know, go to the trade show and Trying to show them how to, how to start their own store, me and my wife. That's you know? lovely. That's lovely. But then I seen you, and that's when you were pushing. He was campaigning that book a lot, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the books was really like, it was the main subject at that time. And I know since then, you got into a lot of other things as I, you know, yeah, yeah. start to research. The books did good, though. Yes, yeah. yeah. I ain't mad at my books. No, not at all. I think, I don't think it can be. I think it's a staple in time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 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 it helps people to, like, to meet you. You get older, you know, I'm old, you know, the books, man, you go back and look at books from time after time, right? And, and you are, you can always cap the history. Well, now it's social live, media. Books can live after you gone. Right. Yeah. You know, who knows? They got some books that have been around for hundreds of years. So uh, books is a way of leaving your mark, you know, society. So society will know that you're existing. But if, if I think, because things sometimes have changed where books is, con- is concerned, because everything is gone so digital right now. So before everything was, you know, literally books, everybody right now, like me, I love audiobooks. Yeah. I would not pick up a physical book to read because I'm always on the go. Yeah. So I prefer to listen to it while I'm driving, doing all the things I like the most. Task. And I remember books that I read when I was a kid. Now searching for those books, you can hardly find them. They'll tell you, well, there's only one copy left over here. You have to search. You know, it might be in another state. That's the only way you can find it. So, somewhat books get missing. Yeah, I mean, they, they could. But, you know, with this day and age, if, if, if it's a good book, it'll be like my book. You can find my book. <laughs> uh, you know, I've sold thousands of them. Mm-hmm. And, and they'll be around. I, and I, I believe it's going to sell millions. You know, right now, um, people who really come up book is mostly hustlers, you know, right. because they understand and, and they're looking for a certain message. Um, the people who are least likely to buy it or the people who don't have any money who are broke. Mm-hmm. And, and, and usually, and, and when I say broke, I don't mean financially broke, but I mean mentally, mentally. physically, you know, that, that, that their spirit is broke down. You know, right to the point to where they don't see themselves uh, escalating mm-hmm. so, and, and what you're saying, I guess that could be true. I mean, they, I mean, they are rare books. You know, right. my book is probably one day. You know, I tell people all the time because I'm only going to sign a hundred thousand of these books. Right. And one day those books are going to go somewhere. Right. And it depends on how many copies you print, and after a while, you can't find those books as like what you said. And people will be searching for them because if it's a case where someone, say, in the next 50, 60 years from now, and they're looking for your book because they heard it's such a great book and they can receive a certain message from it, they might have to go and buy it from somebody else who has it. Yeah, maybe so. Well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, that, that my publishing company will uh, we'll keep uh, publishing. Will keep publishing and, 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 and that it is keep striving because as long as. If the business goes well, somebody's going to keep printing it. They only stop printing when, when they don't sell them. 
How many of their books do you have in store? How many books do I have in store right now? Yeah, no. How many more books yeah, you intend to write then? I keep writing books. Uh, no, I don't. I consider myself a author. You know, okay. I wrote this book because I felt it was a story that needed to be told. So, um, my other books, the, 20, the 21 Keys to Success, mm -hmm. this book wasn't planned. Uh, this book was wrote from a friend of mine, a Cody Crutcher, who, uh, who asked me if he could ride around with me for six months. Mm -hmm. And for those six months, riding around with me, he documented my principles and put them in a book. Wow. What, what we did, we did it together. I didn't know he was writing a book at first. I don't think he even knew he was writing a book. He was just taking notes. Okay. Of all the meetings I go to, all the people I talk to. And, uh, I mean, matter of fact, Cody was there the day that the marshals knocked on the door and, and kicked us out of my mom's house. Oh, mm. uh, yeah? When we went home this year. I had, I had a, so he got first hand of the, at a lot of good stuff. Yeah, he, he did what the cameras couldn't catch. Right. Uh, uh, I believe that had I had cameras on me the day that I got home, the footage would be worth billions of dollars. Exactly. But we weren't fortunate enough to do that. So uh, we got lucky that Cody wrote a lot of it in the book. Right. So, uh, let me ask you this. Do you think that your love for just cause come from where you came from? Because I, I, I be researching, you know what I mean? I do some research. I was like, uh, okay, so you said in, in the beginning you couldn't read, right? But now you you pretty much putting out books. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a long stretch. Mm -hmm. So and, and I still don't know how to do it. To I, I want to put the book out, and I'd be like, man, my cousin do. He put a, he self published his book mm -hmm. is what he told me. I'm like, what is that? You know, he came on the show. He's like, oh yeah, I put he did a book. You know, so in my mind, I'm like, I'd love to do a book. But do you think that love and drive comes from being that at some point you couldn't read, but you start? No, not really. I'm just you know, one of those, one of those guys who just. And I can't really say it's just the money, <laughs> because money is, you know, money is in there, but uh, I, I don't get paid what I should be getting paid right now. Yeah, so, yeah. So I'm working on the value, you know. Yeah. Um, I just like business, you know, I just like making money. I like willing and dealing, you know. One of my friends, one day we were talking on the phone, and, and they were talking about all the business ventures that I'm into, and he said, "Man, you just a wheeling and dealing. That's, mm -hmm. it. That's it. So as long as I'm wheeling and dealing, I'm good." <laughs> Somebody told me to ask you a question. One of my guys said, "Ask him, is he really from Los Angeles? Where was he born?" At? No, I wasn't born. I say, I say, well, I, I, and he said that you was from where we from, right? Right. Down in East Texas. And I I'm say, really? Yeah. I'm from East Texas. Right. I say. I'm past time. I'm by Louisiana, but I'm right there in Jefferson, only in the woods down in there when you go toward Louisiana. Okay. So I'm about six miles on this side. Well, you know where Kilgore is. Come on, now. Yeah, That's I what born, I do. I was born in Old Kilgore High School. Really? Yeah. Right there by Overton, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we stayed in Overton. How long was it? How long did you stay down there, like before you left to go? Oh, I'm brought us down there. was about three, maybe four years. Old. Okay. So you don't remember nothing well, about East Texas? Not really. I mean, I, I, I used to go down there every summer to work. Did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I should love Dude, what kind of work? Puck wood. Stop! I'm going to take these headphones off. That's what I did. Yeah, yeah hey. I'm top loading everything. You all hate? Hey, too. All that. Man, I'm a country boy. But that's where we come from. That's what you had to do down there. The wood industry was tough. Working. Tough yeah. business. That, that's what made me get in the streets, to be honest with you. My daddy, he owned a truck, and we had about five guys. She heard the stories oh, all the time. Man. And he, from nine on up, I'm hauling wood. And at some point, I'm like, man, my uncle, my other uncle, my younger uncle was like, uh, he was in the streets. He had started, we, you know, this one it first came out, too. So once we, we started doing our thing, once he started doing this thing, I started chipping out of his own medicine bottle. And, you know, finding me a couple of people to do that. And, and one thing led to another, and I come up out the woods. And, but that, the rest is history. The rest is like your story, but not on the same level. But it's still a... Left in the South. Woods is tough, man. Well, I mean, what you talking it about? creates, though, it, it, it creates for somebody who's willing, you know, I volunteered to go down in Hallwood and uh, really? I didn't have to. You know, I didn't have to. Yeah. You know, my mom would have kept me right here in LA. She had no problem with me staying here. And uh, I volunteered to go down there and work from sun up to sundown with my uncles who would, who would work a mule to death. Wow. When they finished with the meal, he'd be moaning and groaning. Uh, the mules don't say much. The mules, <laughs> hey, the mules just go to work. 
Man, them dudes, my, my uncles, man. They, they were tough. Ooh. 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 But it helped build principle because you had to get up early no, in the morning. Early. I'm my son. Like, right. Because be that's hard work and it taught you hard work. You got to go feed work. the hogs. You feed the hogs first and then you feed the cows. And then you start loading the trucks up, making sure the gas in the trucks for the, for the cut that wood, make sure the saws is that's good, right. Got to have the on the saws, make sure all the oil. So, so it was, it, it was, it, you had responsibility. Yeah. So, how old were you when you stopped going down there and doing that? Probably about twelve. Yeah. yeah. You got tired of it. I started playing tennis. You know, oh, okay. Yeah. And, and tennis. Um, I couldn't take off in the summers. Yeah. You know, but mm-hmm. I did when I got back to school the next year, everybody been gonna pass my ass. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I wanted to stay on the tennis court all Were you any good? Pretty good. I heard you were. I did all right. I you know, I, I wouldn't I couldn't be macro. <laughs> <laughs> But but but, but yeah. there were some people I could beat, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, it was uh my boy. Uh, his, what did he tell me, man? He's like, you ain't like, sure you ask him, man. It, uh, I call him Pop Johnson, but that ain't what you know. Yeah, man. I know Pop. You know Pop Johnson. Yeah, we was in the That's what he told. Me. He said, "Man, tell him, man." He said, "Man, you just ask him this." I used to shoot his lights out. That's what he said. He said he got you for thirty points on one game, but he said you, you still won. <laughs> <laughs> and he knew I'm gonna get 35. <laughs> so you know he, he didn't get 35 that night. And he lost by one point. Yeah, that's my guy, man. We talked this morning actually. I told him I was getting ready to come see. He could. He like, man, you called me, man, just to ask me real questions. Everybody don't call me. I'm like, man, I'm just calling you because I'm out here getting ready to see one of your friends. You said you know this cat. If you don't know him, I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna call you out. You know? No, no, he know me. Well. No, I just mess him with. We were together about about two or three years. Yeah. You know, he had to watch me win the championship. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what did he tell me? You wouldn't go to the, uh, on, on Thursdays, you would miss Rick because you had to keep up with your uh, your mail that was coming in. Yeah, you actually get so much mail. You know, yeah, you had a breakdown day. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. I, had, I, had, I had three assistants. They helped me answer my letters. Wow. You know. Help me with my research. You know, I turned I turned myself into a to an office. Wow. Mm. He said that. He said you read nothing but entrepreneurial books, or black excellence books, stuff on you know. Yeah, yeah. You didn't mess around with your reading. No, no, no. Once I learned how to read, well, you know, the first thing you had to do is was learn how that that first thing I had to do was learn that there was value in reading. Yeah. yeah. See, at first I placed no value in reading. Mm-hmm. And you know, when 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 I found out that we as humans what we do when there has no value. We don't want it. Yeah, yeah. And what I want it for, it ain't worth nothing. You know, let somebody else get it. It mm-hmm. might be worth something to them, but if it ain't worth nothing to nobody, you throw it in the trash can. Right. Yeah. 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 And, you know, that's the way I did it. Reading all during high school and junior high school. Yeah, mm-hmm. throw this in the trash can. I don't want to make that. A lot of people still think that way. A lot of people always feel like, um, but some people, Reading can't make you no money. You need to get out here in the woods or you need to get out here and put, you know, some muscle behind it to make the money. Well, that's true if you don't know anything. Mm. Uh, but what I found out about about reading in books is that anything that has ever been done have been recorded. They wrote about it. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, so so being from from East Texas, going back down there visiting, then coming back out here, Rick, man, uh, um, we, we're gonna get into the fact of how because I I looked at that documentary. That was great, man. Which at, one? The one, one we, we looked at it yesterday. I don't even remember the name of it. I thought you just had one, but you got a lot of them, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I got about I'm, I'm how, five, six. I was looking at Vlad, and then I said, let me go look at a documentary. I don't heard enough of what, what Vlad and him talking about. I'm going to go see what he said about himself. He had to have some input on that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, man, you know, dang, man. It, so it was a, definitely a, a, a just a, a, a rabbit hole was to go down. Was it cracking the system? That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> how you know? It was on YouTube. That's why. <laughs> no, nah, it was that. That's probably my biggest documentary so far. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and I produced. I produced about seventy percent of that. Seventy five percent of that documentary. Yeah. Uh, I dreamed it up in jail, uh, but my partners wind up taking it from me. The courts gave it to them. Oh uh, wow! Wow. Yeah, we had a. They said we had a secret meeting where where I said, "Hey, void the contract that we signed." And, and I'm gonna just give you all the rights. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's something wow. else when you're dealing with, you know, when you're dealing with um, with this system. So yeah. learning what you learned from that lesson, if you had to go back and do that differently, what would you have done differently so that you could keep the rights in it? 
what would you have done differently? Uh, I would have had to do it all by myself. Mm. Yeah, it's it's tough, you know, when you go to court and 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 first of all, you're black, mm -hmm. and then you're a black drug dealer, mm -hmm. and then you're going over here and you you you're going against this white guy who's never been in any trouble, you know, who's done multiple documentaries, he's world renowned. That's why I wanted him because he was world renowned. You know, I thought, right. you know, why not get one of the best guys? And, you know, that's my formula. Getting a sample of my formula of success <laughs> <laughs> is that I always look for the best look guys the best. that I can get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and sometimes, you know, you can't get the guy you want, so you take the next best. Right. Well, he was one of the best documentaries in, in the world at the mm -hmm. time. and. Uh, I wanted him to be on, on my documentary, you know, so. Wow. But he wind up figuring out how to take the whole thing, yeah. you know, greedy, greedy, greedy. You know, cut your partner out, you know. Uh, That's why but, I hate partnerships. I do. I can't. Just because one guy do that, you know. All of them not going to be Most the of them. Most people, most people are good people. You know, I found that out. Uh, I, I never let one person turn me sour on mm. the world you know no that's good because if you do that now he dictates your life to mm -hmm. you how you feel about everything so no you just a shitty dude yeah. <laughs> but there's a lesson i always feel that in every every downfall that someone has there's a lesson that god allows us to see well you know when i when i play though i don't i don't i don't allow myself to have an area for a downfall okay now people might say well you didn't get no money out of it no i didn't get no money out of it but it stayed on the front page of Netflix for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, and that allowed my face to be shown all over the world. Right. Um, it made it so when I walk through airports, people want people pictures knew. and autographs mm -hmm. and books and T-shirts and, you know, and um, it, it really was, you know, uh, uh, a commercial for this movie. We finished shooting January. I was just about to ask you. I was just about to ask you with all these documentaries, but no movies yet. Well, I, I wanted to do my movie on my on my own terms. Own. I, I didn't want. Um, I could have had my movie done right. two weeks after I was out of prison. I mm -hmm. had deals on the table two weeks after. I, I, straight out of prison, I signed a deal while I was in prison. My last two weeks with uh, with uh, what was the name of that company? Oh, Tom Beers. I don't know what. I forgot the name of Tom Beers' company. Mm -hmm. but everybody know who Tom Beers is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You might not know him, but you know his, his, work. his work. His work. Ice Rock Truckers, mm. Deadliest Catch, mm. Storage Wars. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was supposed to be one of the stars in Storage Wars. Mm. Uh, what else did he do? Oh. A lot of know. people was watching that. He, he, he was the biggest, he was the biggest reality guy on TV okay. when, when, when I got out. Uh, so we signed a deal as soon as I got out to, mm -hmm. to, for him to do a reality show and for me to be in a reality show. So uh, I had I had opportunities to, to be, be when I got out. But I like to have some control over my situations. You exactly. know, I don't want to I don't want to be a hired hand. Mm -hmm. You know, like I see so many of these black entertainers and they just hired hands, you know, mm -hmm. like we give you uh, whatever thousand bucks hundred thousand bucks it and don't they, matter and they want to own everything right including and, your name and you have nothing to say about it exactly you can't talk when we don't want you to talk you mm -hmm. can't go nowhere you can't help your mama if you want to help your mama you can't do it so you know i just didn't want to be put in that position and and while i was in prison i just studied everything you know mm -hmm. i i had tw I did 20 years in, in like three or four months you know so mm -hmm. wow. I, I read <clears throat> 300 and some books, you know, while I was there. Mm -hmm. I read the LA Times every day, the Wall Street Journal. So my mind had expanded and, and I was already an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so so for me to, to, to turn over everything, you know, for a small amount of money, it didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when exactly are you having the movie come out? Well, we're probably going to start shooting. I think... They, it gave me a rough date yesterday, said January. We're January. gonna start shooting. That's just shooting. Shooting. Oh yeah. It yeah, takes almost yeah. a year sometimes. Yeah, we we figuring for for five hours it's gonna be six months shooting and then another year editing. And where are you planning to put it out? Um uh, you know nowadays people are not really doing like the movie theaters as much anymore because of the pandemic. People are going to maybe Amazon. You know, Amazon, Netflix. Like yeah, we're gonna like go that. movies first. I I just wanna I just wanna break the box office. You know, I wanna, you know, uh 
I want to have the biggest movie ever in theaters, and, mm. and, and um, I'm gonna go for it. Okay. You know, okay. I think my movie can do over a billion dollars. So. Wow. Wow. And and like I said, um, I always I know I always tell my wife about the mind, how the mind if it thinks, you know. You don't think a hundred dollars. A lot of people think a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh no! If I get a hundred, I'm gonna put it on. See a what hook. I'm saying? I'm gonna put it on a hook. <laughs> I'm gonna put some Teflon rope on it. And I'm gonna get me one of them. He think a billion dollars. And yes. I'm gonna cast it out. You know? Right. Because I know you 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 gotta fish with something. Right. Yeah. And then my man said, he said, uh, when you go fishing for fish, you use worms. Mm-hmm. If you're fishing for chickens and turkeys, you use corn. Mm-hmm. If you're fishing for men and women, you use dollar bills. That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's the that's exact truth, man. So you know, uh, uh, when I get, you know, I get a little money, I just put it on the hook and throw it back out. Yeah. So are you are you uh, still? Uh, do you deal with boxing? I, I, I was hearing. Yeah, I got the coldest. Maybe, maybe this, I was hearing this kid that I'm working with now could be the coldest dude to ever put on boxing gloves. Well, really? I, I heard Jay, Jay Prince kind of allude to the same thing on one of his guys. So this is how the boxing game, uh, this is what we say. Who, is, who did Jay say? I'm trying to figure. It was some young dudes came in that he was interviewing on, uh, on they just did this podcast, him and Willie D, Willie D and uh, Scarface. And he mentioned some guy, and he was actually in there with him. I don't remember his name, but he was the coldest ever. But I think that's what, when you got boxers, you ain't going to say you ain't good because you picked him. Yeah, yeah. What you hope? You, I mean, with everything you do, you hoping you get the best guy. The best one. What make you think this guy's the best? And what's his name? Kid Austin. Kid Austin. Okay. Yeah. He's only he's only eighteen years old. Yeah, yeah. This guy was young, young too. Yeah, that's good. He ain't yeah. no eighteen years old. Right? <laughs> I, I think mean. he was young. Y'all might have the same dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I know who you talking about. No, they was in, they was Probably sitting the in there with Probably one of the it Masons. was three. It was brothers. Brothers. Yeah, the Masons. That's, that's, I tried, how you know? I tried to you sign know? Him. I tried to sign him. Okay. Yeah, I tried to sign them. Do you too. think there are any competition to your guy? Uh, they can't beat my guy. <laughs> Why? <laughs> First, my guy, he's too quick. Nobody can hit him. And he, and when when they brought him to me, they say he's a mixture between Floyd Mayweather and Sugar Ray Leonard. Mm. Now I didn't know what that meant I until I went to the boxing match, and you know, and he stands right there with him, and and you know, he duck him and. Pop him in the head, dog him in, pop him in the head. head. <laughs> is he very stylish? Is he fancy boxer? Oh my goodness, the kid is is right now. He, he's auditioning for two movies. Mm. Wow, two Block, blockbuster movies. Wow, that's, that's good, man. Two blockbuster movies. And he's so. eighteen. He's only eighteen years old. Wow. So, it, and, and my goal anyway from the beginning of this was not. To have somebody that can fight. That's you know, fighting is just brutal. You know, yeah, that's, some, yeah. mm-hmm. that's some gorilla shit. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. That's that should only be the platform, mm-hmm. you know, where you launch yourself. This kid is not only brutal, but he's also intelligent. He's a good looking kid. The young girl's gonna like him. Uh phenomenal worker, you know, works all the time, uh, acts, you know, uh raps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's his weight class? What, what, what size is he? Uh, one thirty. He can fight anywhere from one thirty to one, maybe one forty right now. Okay, so I think it's a guy that, that uh, the one that um, Floyd been working with. He got that little light skinned boy. Yeah, Tank. He, well, he my guy want to fight. He, my guy want to fight. He's in his class. Mm-hmm. So I just want to think tank. about it. <laughs> so when <laughs> they gonna set it up? Oh, set it up. <laughs> well, well, you know, they, right now they, they're not still? gonna they're not gonna let him fight. Uh, first, my guy is, is his record is not strong enough yet. Okay, he got to uh, build his way up. He got to build his record up a little mm-hmm. more, and once he topped them all in notoriety and 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 brilliance, mm-hmm. then they'll want to fight him. But right mm-hmm. now, you know, don't make no sense for him to right. fight him. The money not there. Money, yeah. You know, uh, Tank is getting they say five million dollars a fight, so you know he wants to fight somebody that. It's worth it. It's worth mm-hmm. You know, they got to bring like, Yeah, because with boxing, to me, it's just a money thing. You have to build your notoriety up so people want to watch the fight. Absolutely. Because, because that's how people get paid. Promoters want people that's going to sell tickets mm-hmm. and bring eyeballs to the TV. Exactly. So, my guy got both of those coming. 
you know. I, I noticed with everything that you've done so far and you've been talking about, you're very, very competitive from what I can see. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't want nobody to beat me. <laughs> I can see that in everything. Bob Johnson didn't win. He said Sports, he scored 30. Well, well, you know, that's how I read over 200 <laughs> books while I was in prison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I was sitting in prison and, and I was looking out at the world and I'm looking out at it. And when I compete, I don't compete. Like some people will say, oh, man, you know, when I first started talking about boxing, it was like, oh, well, Jay-Z tried it and 50 Cent tried. Man, don't try it. Don't compare Try me to no 50 Cent and Jay-Z, <laughs> man. Don't you know I'm chasing Bill Gates? Uh -huh. I want I want uh, 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 Jeff Bezos. There it is. You know, them the dudes. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm like a prize fighter. I want the best in the world. I don't want to. Wow. I don't want to. And, and and that's how I started to read books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I was sitting in prison and I was like, wow. How can you get an edge on these guys? Yeah. And then I was reading this Liberian's book, right? I was I was I was working on I was working on publishing my book. Total total luck. But you know what I've learned is they say that when you work hard, you get lucky. Mm -hmm. So one day I'm reading a book on how to publish a book. Because I'm, I'm going to publish my book. I'm writing my book, so I want to know how to publish it. You know, what printing companies to go to. And uh, this, this librarian had a book that she had did, and she was saying, basically in a book, that she worked in a library for 25, 30 years. And what she discovered, that the library was one of the most valuable places on the planet. Wow. And I was like, what is this lady talking about? And then I'm the kind of guy, like, you know, some people, you can tell them something, they say, oh, that nigga lying, you know what I mean? That nothing that nigga say. But me, I'm going to test it. I'm going to prove that you a liar. You know, I ain't going to just say you no lie. I'm going to prove that you a liar. I'm going to go out and test your method. So what I did is I started testing her method. I started saying, oh, I want to do this. And, and in, the, in, the, in, the joint, in the jail, for a while, they had like a thing where we could get books from the public library. You okay. fill out the paper. I want this book. And send it in, and they would send you the book. So I just started saying, give me some books on real estate. Give me some books on selling cars. Give me the books on how to borrow money. Give me the books on how to build credit. And so I'm just crowning all these books. Oh, they got books on the mind. Uh, positive thinking. You know, so I'm, I'm wow. just cramming all this stuff in. So now I'm gaining all of this new information, information. that I had never knew before. Uh -huh. You know, like I never knew that... Uh, there's a thing that's called if you can see it in your mind, your body can achieve it. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, and as well as like a lot of people, the thing that they don't want is what they bring to themselves. You exactly. know, because the only thing on their mind is uh, I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be broke. But if you're feeling like that, then that's what you're going to be. Or mm -hmm. I don't want to be like my daddy and turn around and, and be just, just like, like your daddy. Like him. Instead of me, what I did, I learned to say, oh, I want to be filthy rich. Hmm. I want to be so rich that I can take care of the whole world if that's I want positive to. positive thinking. That's what it's called. That's mm -hmm. the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The yeah. habit of positive yeah. thinking. Yeah. 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 You, brought it, you brought it right to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. T. Uh, T. Harv Eker, too, on mm -hmm. uh, Secret Minds of a Millionaire. Yeah. That's a good one. I read that, too. Did you? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I think those books do something for you. When it you helps think, you yeah, to stretch, you know, where you might not think of something. It's like sparring. It, it teaches you things that you, you know, you might Absolutely. not even have a challenge. But, it, 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 but to me, what it taught me is the fact that it's you build, look on your foundation, look at where it came from, because the reason why you think a certain way is usually because of something that your parents said or even something that they did. And you didn't realize that you picked up a certain trait. It came. So you have to restructure your foundation, which is changing how you think, how Absolutely. you perceive things. And then that's how you can move on. But if you can't see that there's something wrong with how you're thinking because people don't uh, ever know the same. Uh, <laughs> you brought up a good one and that's the problem right now we having with our people they don't, they don't even know mm -hmm. that they fucked up mm -hmm. <laughs> that's see true. it's bad when you it's fucked true. up and you don't, you don't know, know that it. you fucked yeah. up mm -hmm. you know uh um wow you said you said something else i was gonna comment on too what did you say you said uh oh the way that things are and we are accumulation of everything that we saw, heard, and been around. Mm -hmm. We pick all that stuff up and that becomes our character. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you've been around shit all your life, 
your your character is shit. And you have to literally take yourself. Like what I do right now is is you seeing you seeing the, the old guy that 28 year old Rick when he was sitting in prison started the mold. He started to build this old motherfucker. You know, like, mm-hmm. you know you're going to get to be 60, but you ain't going to be <laughs> that same dumb yeah, yeah, right. yeah. MF you was when you was yeah. 24. Right. Yeah. See, because you had enough money to never need money again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I you heard was dumb. Ones. But you was dumb. But you mm-hmm. was dumb. But you were smart, but you was dumb. You was, I mean, everybody do some smart stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, you, <laughs> you, take right. the, you can take the, the dumbest person in the world every now and then they'll do something smart. Yeah, you yeah. know something that 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 that's okay. It, you, one of my favorite books, as a man thinks, said that so nobody, mm-hmm. nobody is totally perfect. Wow, that's true. Nobody has not did something wrong in their life. Nobody living exactly. So when you you can't really judge people because you don't know how much wrong they did and you don't know how much good they did. Only they know. That's right. So we have to put ourselves in a position now with, with me knowing this is that I have to try to do more good now than I ever did before because I know that I've done a lot of bad and I try not to do anything bad. I try not to do anything wrong. You know, I try not to make no mistakes. But at the end of the day, I always say, I tell myself, I tell my husband all the time, <clears throat> you can't control what nobody else think or do. You can only control yourself because at the end of the day, you have to answer to God and you by yourself have to answer to him. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I, don't, I don't care what other people think. Right, yeah. right. So, that's, your, that's your issue. You you think what you want to think. I, <laughs> when I look... When I looked at you, let me cut you off. But when I looked at your the, your demeanor and the way that you handle business, and the way, even in the street side, it's just I see good management. The way you deal with people, oh, I think you. I think you. That's your thing. I, I really when oh, I start yeah. looking, like, I make people better. Yeah, yeah. I make I them better that. than they are when I come there. Uh, uh, you know what I tell I tell people now that that I'm the greatest helper in the world. <laughs> you need assistance. You need a helper. Mm-hmm. Somebody to help you get to the next level. I'm that one. You know, that's um, servitude. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I don't mind helping people. I, I, I get a kick out of it. You know, mm-hmm. I, mean, I almost I almost feel kind of kind of selfish for doing it. You know, it's like, yeah, you, you helping people because it makes you it gives you this feeling that they don't even know how it feels. Let me ask you this. Have you ever helped somebody and they thought they was getting over on you? I don't know. I don't care because mm-hmm. <laughs> I, 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 they can't. I, yeah. They can't because. My my conviction for what I did was greater than yours. Okay, you know it, it gave me more pleasure to help you than you could ever benefit from 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 uh, 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 from me. So I, I I get so much joy out of helping people, out of seeing them grow. You know, I like to see people just sprout up and and and, and become. You know that. For them getting over on me, that was nothing. And you, 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 you did, you took that. That was, that was crumbs, <laughs> you know. And, and and they do it all the time, you right. know. And and I, I, I ask people. Matter of fact, I had a conversation with a, with a young man today, you know. And I say, man, I thought your character was different. You know, twenty one year old dude out of New Orleans. I seen that. Uh, uh, he was on your live. No, no, I didn't. I seen that. a guy on your live, and he was from Louisiana too. I think you saw the one the other night. Say, yeah, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. him. Me and him okay. went, not him. This is I enjoyed kid. it, though. I do these all the time. I like it because well, you give it well, back. One of my friends just got out of prison, 22 years. Uh, I taught him how to read. Wow. Oh. I'm going to put him on my live. Man, we had a conversation last night. We talked for about two hours. He only been out two days. And uh, this guy loved me. Wow. I'm talking about when he's, he's about 6'5". When he's around, you can't get out of line with me. <laughs> or if you do, you better hope that I'm paying attention, because if I ain't, he might be gonna hit you in the head with something. Wow! You know that's the kind of this is the kind love of guy he has for you. Yeah, so this is the kind good. of love he has for me. That's good. You know, so it's something like when you take people under your wing and you show them things. God give you the ability to show somebody something. Because I've been there. You know, I shown a guy how to read when I was locked up. Not on the level of you, but I, I've I've done that. Or dealt with people who couldn't deal with issues when their family members passed away when we was incarcerated. Absolutely. These things are happening. I'm having a prayer circle and everything else. They laugh and they say, you wasn't doing that when you was in the world, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I was just trying to pray with people and tell them that God is good and I had changed. Cause I, like you, you read, 
you read books of entrepreneurship. I read the Bible like consistently the whole time for three years straight. I would read it in other books, of course, but it centered eyes around spirituality. Yeah. And and that basically gave me grounding because I didn't think I was like, it's, this can't be real. My mom passed away six months before I got in this situation. She gave holler, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But I'm like, nah, she, she didn't even know how to read like that. So I felt like it was a white man's God and all that other stuff. So. Yeah, man, you know, it make you feel a certain way when you come into that environment and you help others, man. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no you doubt. know, well, but I was able to help people, man. Yeah, I mean, we supposed to. Yeah. You know, we supposed to. I, I let them in the wrong way. Time. So when you leave people in the wrong way, I know, you know, you worse than me. I had about, <laughs> I had about 10, 11. My friends had life sentences. Correct. Wow. And not they didn't go to jail in my case. They got so big that they started their own crews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, where, where they was the head guy. So uh, exactly. And I said that if we can do that, then we can do what we're doing now. And, and that's what I always would wonder, because I've told so many people, I've met so many people who were in the streets, even from back home in Jamaica. And I would always say, OK, if you can run a successful organization, dealing with all of these people, making millions of money, you know, and yes, it's illegal. Why not turn that illegal business into something legal? Because you have the mindset for it. You're an entrepreneur. You're con you, you are delegating. You are investing. You are doing everything. You have the know-how to do everything in a legal what? way. But in the still, illegal way. You're right. But you can still turn it. You can. They're well, transferable. Right. So but, I always say why. But illegal business is different. Okay. So you got to do something different that you never did before. You know, there's a saying that said there's three doors. Mm -hmm. One door, don't nobody know what's going on on the other side on that door. Right. The other door, oh, it's a line on the other side of that door. And this one here, it's a bear. Which one you going to take? And they say most people pick between the two, the line and the bear. Mm. The other door is the door to freedom. Wow. But it's different. So they never take the different door. Mm -hmm. They are scared to go to the unknown. The unknown. What is it going to be like? What is everybody going to say? So with me, I don't care what they say. But Rick, how many people then because came out and 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 was with, like your friends that you were just explaining to us, and decided to go back down that route um, that you felt like was going to change? Because I, I have had that. Time. I don't know. I had a few, but I. You know I mean, you know, That's they, still they me, do what they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, you know, do choice. what you do. Yeah. You know, if you if you can handle it, handle it. Because <laughs> it's not. But I, I'm not going to. If I see somebody on top of the building and get ready to commit suicide, I ain't going to walk up and try to catch him. No, no, no. No, now, I will say, hey, man, you know, if you jump, you're going you gonna to break everything in your body. and You're going to probably die. And, and, but I'm not going to put myself in harm's way because. You decided that you want to do whatever it is you want to do in life. Go ahead and do it. I don't, got it. Don't include me. Let me ask you this. Another one. I'm going to let you go because I know you got <laughs> some stuff. For me, but um, I'm OK. Uh, you come home and you change and you're doing your thing. And but but you've changed. You, you're writing books. I ain't now. really. I ain't really changed. You're not selling drugs anymore. That's the only thing I took out of my game. OK. But then there's other guys for me that, you know, there's just recently that'll come to you. They want to bring up them old stories and talk about them old things. Are those guys still, do you get that conversation? Yeah. You know, every now and then somebody asks me about, you know, the back, the old days, Yeah, and, you know, what is it like this? What is a snitch and this? And, you know, I, yeah, that's, you know, I'm trying to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, finish. Oh, yeah. No, because I wanted to know, because just like you said, the only thing you took out of um, the old you is the drug game. Yeah. But in everything that you knew back then of how to do things and what you were doing, how much of that do you use in today's society? All of it. All of it. The only part I don't do to is be I, successful. I just don't sell cocaine no more. That's it. We books. I, you know, when I first started selling my book, they said, man, you can't sell books like you sold. Uh, uh, yes, you can. Like you <laughs> sold cocaine because I'd be in front of the supermarket. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? 11, 12 o'clock at night, I'm sitting in front of the supermarket. Hey, man, this is my book. It just came out. You ought to read this book. Great book. And some people would buy it. To wow. me, I feel like it's a it's a drive. It's a drive. When, it, when you go out here and hustle whatever that you love, and when I say hustle, if you have a passion for it, because nobody's going to go out here and do it like you will, because it's yours. They shouldn't. And that's how I look Why at it. Why should they do it for you? Some people will, because you pay them. 
Yeah, but they're not going to do it like you could do it. Right. Because even when we're running our business, um, we have a boutique. And we've had multiple, we've had up to seven. And one thing I used to hate about it is the fact that whenever I would hire people and teach them exactly to do what I do and leave them in a different locations, when customers came in, they're looking for me, no matter what, they're yeah. looking for me, no matter how much I train them to be me, so to right, say, right. they're coming wherever I'm, I am. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm like, Ugh. You well, can't be well people don't have the confidence that you have. Sometimes <laughs> people are afraid. People are afraid to fail. You know, you know, you know, uh, what book was that I was reading? Uh, it was talking about the the power of fear, the power of love, the power of unknown. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and, and these are powerful fears. Right. You know, these are things that really affect people's lives. Mm-hmm. Like. I don't want people to know that I tried that and I didn't make it. You mm-hmm. know, uh, uh, it makes you make the wrong decision sometimes because you're scared to make the wrong de- decision. And then your family tell you, "Boy, you can't do that." Right. Everybody in the family. Yeah, you you, you can't do that. You, how you gonna do that? And I wasn't able to do it. And that's usually exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what they that's say. Exactly what they say. <laughs> so so you know you you have to build it up in yourself to where you're confident in yourself that. No matter what everybody else is saying, that I'm gonna do what I feel I should be doing. Mm-hmm. Because I really was a drug dealer, not because I wanted to be a drug dealer. If somebody would have told me a couple of weeks before I started selling cocaine, I was gonna be a cocaine dealer, I would have laughed. So wow. I would have been on the floor rolling over, that, like <laughs> you're the dumbest man in the whole world. <laughs> it's just like if somebody would have told me when I was in jail, I was gonna be a weed dealer. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, you gonna get out? You are gonna be selling weed? Because I didn't even know weed was legal in California. Really? You didn't? I'm in jail in Texas. I'm in jail in Texas, <laughs> Texas, Texas. Canada, Texas. That's what that's So what I don't in. know what's going on. I'm not getting L.A. newspapers right. no more. I'm getting, you know, the Texas, Texas, Texas paper. Texas paper. And, you know. You're by Texas, Texas Texas Canada, and all that. You know. <laughs> um, this is the stuff. And, and see, you only know what you're fed. Right. So how long was you in Texas, Canada? I did five, 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 five and a half years. Five, yeah, right almost there. Almost six Texas. years in Texarkana. Mm. So you ain't you when you go like to Houston now, you've never went back down to Tyler and nothing like that ever. Go back to Tyler? Yeah. You do? I got family in Tyler. I, I know I, I you was young when you left. I thought they might have moved away, but they still there. Oh no, we they ain't gonna never, my, my, my grandfather <laughs> had, <laughs> My grandfather had twenty four kids. Wow. Mine, yeah, mine had nineteen. So I got I got family in Houston, Dallas. You have a huge family. Uh, Tyler, Fort Worth. And you keep in contact with all of them. No, I don't. No, we. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. But when you was in Texas, County, I let people visit call you? me. They can call me. I answer my phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got, I got fourteen thousand numbers in my phone. Wow, you like Mike Jones? You mm-hmm. so, <laughs> so, let everybody so have his really, number. I don't really call people. You know, if if I call you, it's a rarity. Mm. You know, I only call a very, very, very few people very that selective. I pick up the phone and call. Uh, without them initiating the call. Okay. Because I don't want to talk to people. I, I don't know. Let me, I, if I say that, people are going to think something. They're going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> they might be mad. If we're not talking about something. Right. I don't want to talk to you. I got you. You know, I don't want to know about the weather. They don't, you don't want to shoot the breeze. I ain't got time to shoot the breeze. Mm-hmm. You know, I shot the breeze for 20 years in, in the penitentiary. <laughs> and even in there, though, I don't really like shooting the breeze. Right. You know, I, yeah. I, I kept You're too busy reading, trying too, to too busy gain reading. knowledge. Oh, he plays sports, too, according to Pop Johnson. So yeah, yeah. he worked yeah, I, him up on I that. I played their basketball. Yeah, yeah, that's what he say. But you didn't what? play tennis. They didn't have tennis in there. Yeah, we played tennis. You, I, what? And I'm the one guy that I got the tennis course taken out. <laughs> no. I started teaching all them black boys how to hit a tennis ball, and, and they didn't, they didn't like, like that. that. No, they took them tennis courts out. <laughs> wow! By the year I thought I was there, I had a, I and I taught I taught so many dudes how to play tennis. It's funny how when wow. you when you go into a place like he, like that, like we go into leadership shows up, and it's it's acknowledged. They don't even have to tell nobody nothing. It just happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, a leader is a leader. Yeah, you know, you can't. And you're a natural leader, especially yeah. because of what you were doing. You had to. You were the leader. But yeah. could you see leadership before that when you was young? My mom said I always see? was the head leader. Mm. Yeah. And when I was, we was kids. She, she was my brother. She was me too. Mm. <laughs> he did it, but I'm gonna get I you. Know you I, know, I know you had something to do with it. You told How many siblings it. did you have? Um, five. And you, f- you fell where in the five? Second. Second. Second to the top. 
a second to the top. Yeah, but I'm the I'm the top. You know, I t- okay. I like, take care of my older brother. I take care of my older brother. He do what I say do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, uh, any all your brothers up here? No, nah, no, nah, I got a brother in Kansas City right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Family is important, right? Uh, uh, Absolutely. But, but Absolutely. when when you get older, the most. Older, the most. You so know. you have a family right now. Um, did you gain this family after you got out? You mean You're kids? married and kids? Uh, I had, I had, uh, how many kids did I have when I went to prison? Oh, five, yeah. five or six. Oh, okay. Did you have one when you got out? Two. Two. Two, yeah. yeah two boys? Two. No, a boy and a girl. A boy and a girl? Yeah. And you got married after you got out? No, uh, uh, no, not really. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe in traditional marriage. Yeah, you know? I like that. Uh, we got a commitment. Okay. Uh, what I believe more so is more important than a marriage is a partnership. Okay. Because a, a true friend, no matter what happens, is going to still be your friend. Right. You know, I, I know people who, who friends accidentally shot them with guns and they <laughs> stayed friends. Stayed friends. You know, uh, almost killed them in a car wreck and they still was mm-hmm. friends. Wow. So I, I believe that a friendship is more important than... Uh, you know, a piece of paper that the judge gave you say, y'all do. And, right. you know, I seen them do that and be broke up in two months. Mm. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Man. But, but a real friendship and a real partnership is going to endure when everything else is gone. You know, like e- even my friends that, 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 that has done something wrong to me and we don't even talk no more. But if you really need me, you're I'm coming. You. Exactly. And I believe the same thing. Mm-hmm. That all of my friends, none of my friends that, that that I actually associated with, just about all of them is going to come if I need them. Now, the reason why I was yeah. asking you that, because if she was there during your whole incarceration and stuff like that, I was 20 like, years? Nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody <laughs> doing that. She's, no. she's, she's a real, real strong woman. Absolutely. If they there for six months, they <laughs> You <strong>. lucky. <laughs> I, no, no, I think for three I months, I was, it was out of there, man. No, because I have um, relatives who, um, boyfriends went to prison, and when I mean they go down there Y'all continuously. Jamaicans. <laughs> Y'all Jamaicans. <laughs> yeah, hey. Y'all different. Uh, uh, Y'all different. Yeah, we are different. Y'all got three say. jobs yeah, and all that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all have, clean rooms and do feet I and get all to that. hear that all the time, buddy. We you ain't got to tell me. Really I've been, been to Jamaica. I've been to Jamaica. I know how y'all get yeah, out. Yeah. And I did time with Jamaicans, too. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's come with a little bit of a different mentality, mm-hmm. you know, coming from Jamaica because... Uh, um, even though the American system is still over there, it's really influenced in, in Jamaica, but you you guys still have a little bit of that Caribbean, you know, that African mm-hmm. mentality, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like when people be scared of Jamaica, man, them Jamaicans, they'll yeah, kill you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah they got a rep, they got a rep. Yeah, y'all got a rep, so, uh-huh. so it, that rep is, is not just rep, but it, it's kind of the way you guys were raised right. too. You know, yeah, you know, raised yeah. a little bit different under this. Exactly. Yeah. Under the circumstances. You know, you're different. exactly right. Yeah. So when you, let me ask you With this. these American women? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different ball game. Lately. They don't play. As soon as I couldn't pay no more rent and car notes and phone bills, they was gone. And wow, I felt we gonna be like, what we gonna do? Come on, let's go do something. Let's go figure it man, out. I could have hit some licks when I was there. I had, I had, <laughs> man, I couldn't even get nobody to go to 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 the trial when when we were suing for Anita Baker. Wow, I couldn't get nobody to continue to go to the trial. Just keep me updated on what was going on. They right. they settled they settled the case. I don't even know how much my man got. <laughs> wow. Man. That's but crazy. So but Jamaica, it's a lot of things that are different. Even like, um, I knew people in Jamaica, which I assumed that they were in the drug game, right? Because in Jamaica, they're not going to tell you. Nobody's going to say, okay, this is what I do. You just see a person who is driving big cars, never go to work, all of that. Well, that's, kind, just, of a, that's kind of a, a telling too. I know, but they'll, but when I came here to the States, I would meet people and they'll outright tell you that's what they do. And I'm like, that's some new guys. <laughs> that's some new internet guys who be all on there showing the dope. Hey, look, I got cocaine. I got pills. I got drink. And I thought that was so weird. I'm like, how are you not busted? I'm like, you can't just go around just telling your whole business. That's, I thought it was just a thing that Americans do. 
Because nah, I nah, all Americans don't. Look at he look. He look at me like. I hid that. I didn't want nobody to know I was a dope dealer. That's why I didn't drive the big cars. I didn't dress up. See, he different. He was kind of like my uncle. But mm-hmm. me, I was different. I pull out every dime I had trying to show you what I was doing because I didn't never have nothing. Yeah. So it's just a different different way people do. And like, for me to drive a big car and put on all the jewelry and stuff, that was like, I'm a dope dealer. Look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like sitting in a red flag. That's what, yeah. I, during that time I thought about it, I was like, was that the same time when Frank Lucas, that was, his was before yours because he it was, was heroin. Me. Yeah. It was, it was heroin and then drug, yours came in the uh, crack era. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a but, crack, I'm a crack era. <laughs> <laughs> you went to Cincinnati, correct? Yeah. And, and so leave, Leaving L.A., going to Cincinnati, what was the difference? Did you just continue on as you was doing in L.A.? Well, you know, Cincinnati was a little slower. Okay. People was a little more country, uh, more friendly, less violent. Um, I love Cincinnati. I mean, to me, Cincinnati was like the city and the country mixed. You wow. Know, like, like you got the best of both worlds. The people was like really, really friendly. Um, the women was gullible. Wow. You know, um, I, I like Cincinnati. I made a lot of money in Cincinnati. I made more it, money. You say country, is it trees? I don't know, like he said, you got the trees, piney woods. Lot it's lot like trees. that. trees. You know, houses is in the middle of trees. And I like, like that. Almost like a forest. Like Atlanta, right? too. Atlanta's like Kind of like Atlanta. Yeah. Kind of like Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like, and, and Birmingham. I like Birmingham. It's like that, too. I like them trees. I'm a tree dude, man. I don't know yeah. what that is. I think it's East Texas guy. It was just too small. You know, I, I outgrew it too fast. My name started. Everybody know you. Yeah. Like, even though I didn't go nowhere and I was using fake names, you know, mm. I was down in a fake name. I had fake ID, you know, fake driver's license and everything. Cause I don't want nobody to know me. Yeah. I yeah. don't want to be known. That's yeah. how it's supposed to be. And, uh, they figured it out though. Mm. Figured it out. They figured out who I was. You know? Did you have I remember, any? I remember, go my, ahead. I remember my girlfriend from Cincinnati, she called me cause she don't know my name. She don't know my real name. So she called me, she say, uh, boy, don't worry. Uh, they got the wrong name. I say, I say, what name they got? She say, Rick Ross. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy, but it's real. Uh, and this been my girlfriend for a year and a half, you know. <laughs> they got wow. the wrong guy. They got the wrong guy. <laughs> but that, you know, that's how I did it. But um, you know, when you when you're talking about people who have unlimited resources, yeah. you know, I can remember sitting in, in San Diego in the high rise, looking out this little window, and out my window was the aircraft carriers. Wow. And, and during the time that they was doing Adam Hussein, I'm watching these ships go in and out. You know, you know, those aircraft, those, those aircraft carriers, they got a whole, they got a whole army around the ship. You know, like they might have like 10 uh, fighter ships, uh, uh, helicopters and all kind of stuff to protect that sh- you know that that ship is worth a mm-hmm, lot of money mm-hmm. so they put a, a lot of stuff around it to protect it so that nobody can get to 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 that ship mm-hmm. and I was sitting there watching that stuff come in and I was like wow you fighting all that <laughs> and some you know because when I went to, when I go to court it says United States versus Ricky Ross and after I saw what they was doing, Hussam Hussein, I said, man, they will use all that to bring you to justice, mm-hmm. to their justice. So you keep saying your name and I keep thinking about Rick Ross and how he how that all that happened. And you was real strong on that when you first came home, because I'm telling you, I was really in tune with, with you. I, I, I was in you know places you was at and I know you was fighting for that. Whatever became of that? Uh, they said I should have filed. Two no no five days before I got out of prison I think that's what the judge said she 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 let them win on statute of limitations but you know it was it's it's tough on the judge you know you you got a white judge and I'm suing white companies wow. good white companies you know yeah, yeah. who ain't did no crime in a long time, time. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, so how, nobody don't know what crimes they committed how did that affect you when when did you did you just I, I'm on to the next thing I was hurt the day that she she did it. You know, uh, cause I was totally thought that, 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 that we were going to win. Yeah. You know, I was, I was totally under the pressure. No way we're going to lose this one. Uh, so I was a little, little hurt, little disappointed. Uh, um, I probably was more disappointed though, when they gave the documentary away, mm, when wow. they told me that, 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 um, that, that he believed that the guy, when the guy told him that I voided the contract, he believed that. That I really did avoid the, avoid the contract, and, and was, he didn't have no proof. Well, he had the guy who 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 
Mark Lebman, who, who directed the documentary, they had his proof. He was mm. proof, you know, and he's a good white guy. Yeah. You know, mm. he, he ain't never been to jail before. His word against yours. And then it was an African guy named Mike Mungry who I brought onto the piece. You know, I wasn't going to let Mark do it. Mark didn't want Mike at first. I was like, no, if Mike ain't doing it. You ain't going to do it. I'll get somebody else to do my documentary. Mike wow. is my man. Mike been writing me and taking my calls. He working on this documentary. Mm -hmm. So when he came in, Mark liked the way he worked. Mm. So then when they did the Obama theory, he let Mike shoot the Obama theory and paid him. And that's what he bought Mike with. Mike, for what, mm -hmm. what he did that. Mm -hmm. So now Mike is like, oh, Mark paying me. Rick ain't paying me nothing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but he didn't have enough sense to say, man, if it wasn't been for Rick, I wouldn't have even been on his piece and I wouldn't have got the Obama theory. You know, because really in techni technically the way I do business, if I would have got the Obama theory, I would have kicked him a little something, you know, here, man, right, here, right. $5, here, $10, so you go get you one of the more vegan burgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that, do you, do you, are you a vegan? I'm vegan. I uh, see. I had to bring that up because 31 is, years. Wow. wow. So you did it before it was popular. Absolutely. That, that's, Why did that's you a difference. change? Uh, I'm a lot of reasons. I don't want to see people. I mean, I don't want to see stuff die. Oh, okay. wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to see stuff die. I didn't want to be a part of, of this, and slaughterous mentality that um, that America is is putting down. You know, we fishing all the fish out the sea. You know, we got cows that are polluting the ozone, and you know. It's, but you feel a lot healthier. I don't know. Thirty, 30 years. years. I know. <laughs> I know. But how? But how easy? How easy was it for you to become a vegan back thirty something years ago? Nowadays, they make it so much easier. With you in know, the beginning, it was tough. You know, just. You you just breaking that 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 philosophy that you need me to live. See, I believe I needed me to live. Really? Yeah. See, I uh -huh. don't believe that, but it's still hard to to, to stop. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I know you have beans. You have other things that you can get your protein from. Oh yeah. From. Not now. It's so many things that they 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 substitute with meat. But back then it was tough, especially in jail. You know, my my diet was mostly. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, how can oatmeal, you do that? Oatmeal, peanut butter, uh, beans and rice. That was it. Wow. Yeah. And salads. And, and you never got tired of it. Well, you know, when we eat, see, I read another book too. <laughs> <laughs> the book said, do you live to eat? Or do you, or do you eat, eat to live? live? Or yeah. do you eat to live? Yeah, and I, I, I had to, I had to question book. myself and I was like, wow, I've been living to eat. Mm -hmm. But now I want to eat to live, which I thought was more important. I think it helps your health I too. I thought about that before because when you really think about, I can't remember how much do you need. Like, you can actually go for days without eating. And even when you see people in Africa who are starving, but they only eat like this little bit for, per day and yeah. they're okay. But then for us who have every all this food readily available and we can't go some, some hours without eating because we're starving. And we use that word lightly to say that we're starving, but we're really not. We're the fattest people in the country. <laughs> in the world. In the Americans world. Right. are the fattest people in the world. We obese. You know, um, you right. that's why this virus is is really kicking our ass because we're so unhealthy. You right. know, we do unhealthy things. We think unhealthy, we eat unhealthy, uh, we act unhealthy and and um it allows stuff like this virus to get in. I got to ask you, know, you something. Say, I got to ask you about that second. vaccine. Hold I on one second. You. One second. <laughs> you know how they say street smart and book smart? People always say, well, people who are book smart, they always, you know, people can fool them easily because they don't know anything about, they don't have the common sense for the streets yeah. compared to, some, okay, well, you were street smart before you were book smart. <laughs> so for you, if it was reversed where you actually had gotten your book smart first, how do you feel that your outcome would have been? Well, I've been an entrepreneur all my life. You know, when, when I used to choose to go and work in the hay field with my uncles, mm -hmm. you know, that was entrepreneurism. And Pugwood. Say Pugwood. And Pugwood. <laughs> my and, strong, strong and Pugwood. <laughs> and, and digging, and digging <laughs> fence poles. Ooh, I done dug man, fence I poles. I did that too. too. You know, so uh, that was already entrepreneurism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... But do when, you think you would have invested differently? You would have. Oh, absolutely. Been, no, if yeah, I would have yeah. known, if I would have known about credit, you know now. if I would have known about credit, just just something simple as credit, you know, because my mom always said, well, don't get nothing on credit. Mm -hmm. Had I known about credit, 
no telling where I could have been, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, like one of my books, it, it talks about, my mistake was, my biggest mistake was, I went to a drug dealer and asked him how to make money. Mm. See, what I wow. learned is who I should have been going to is was a the millionaire ba or a bank. The banker. Because mm -hmm. he handles money. That's what he do. He sells money. And I should learn how to sell money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. I was going to ask you about the vaccine. Um, did you take it? No. Um, what's your view on it? Well, I, I have a friend. His name is uh, Dr. Leslie Ray Matthews out of, mm -hmm. out of Atlanta, Georgia. He was the head trauma doctor at uh, Grady Memorial in Atlanta for I don't know how many years. Uh, probably one of the best surgeons in the world. And it should be in the White House right now. Mm -hmm. um, he told me that all I needed was vitamin D3. Wow. And he showed me how to use the vitamin D3 to keep myself healthy. And from that information that he gave me, I've got about 15 people at the hospital. Really? When you say how to use vitamin D3, isn't it just a pill that you just take? Yeah. Because you said how to use it. I'm like, is there a special way to use it? Yeah. If what? you just take, if you just say, if you go to, if you go to Walmart and you get the vitamin D3 with 200 milligrams, you didn't get much vitamin D3. Okay. If you go there and you get the pill with 10,000 milligrams, you got a whole lot more milligrams. Mm -hmm. So what he taught me to do is if you catch the virus, you high dose. Okay. You take 20,000, 30,000, just on a regular basis, 5,000, 10,000 every, every day, just about. And wow. But didn't you tell me the other day that actually a doctor passed away from- He um, didn't take his vitamin D3. <laughs> Hell, I'll well, tell you what's going on with that. It, it, yeah. <laughs> the first thing I do when I find out one of my relatives is in the hospital, the first thing I tell them, check your vitamin D level. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, deplete it. My niece was in, in the hospital in, in uh, Austin, Texas. And my brother called me. She had been in there two weeks. And uh, I called her. I said, hey, babe, how you feeling? She said, I don't feel good. Huh? I said, listen, tomorrow morning, when your doctor comes, this is late at night when they call me. Probably like 11 o'clock our time, so real late her time in Texas. I said, listen, when the doctor come in in the morning, tell him to check your vitamin D level. So she did. I called her back. She said, hey, um, my vitamin D is depleted. I said, tell him to give you a high dose of vitamin D immediately. Two days later, she was out the hospital. She said, Unc, I'm on my way home. I got this uh, this breathing tube with me, though, but I'm on my way home. Wow. So she was off the breathing tube. No, wow. she had the breathing tube. She took that home yeah. with her. Mm -hmm. But she no longer needed to be in the hospital. In the hospital. Correct. I just had a friend who just had the, the, the Delta version two weeks, week ago. And uh, when he called me, he had been sick two weeks and a half, I think. And he was telling me that his wife wasn't moving. Mm. I said, okay, look what you do. Can you go to the store? He said, yeah, I can make it to the store. I said, if you can't, I'll come over there and bring it to you. He said, no, I can make it to the store. Huh? You know, all the, all the young guys around here. They talk, all you know? call us on. Yeah, they call uh, me. I don't unk, so. like it. I'm, I'm not like it. Um, um, you like being unk? Well, you know, unk is a special, that's a special word. Well, That's why? a special word when they say unk. We'll go into that. It's Let's just talk about the vitamin OG, D, right? That's all they said. OG, OG a school, all so, that. So, so when he went to the store, he got the vitamin D, mm -hmm. and he took it. I said, he said, my wife, man, she she ain't responding. I said, stick it in her mouth. Mm -hmm. Make her take him. He did. And the next day, he was like, Uncle, I'm moving around now. I said, okay. He said, I ain't ate in three days. I said, listen. Go in there and wolf some food down. Don't try to taste it because, you know, you, they don't lost their taste and yeah, the smell. Yeah, so yeah. when you lose that, you don't really want to eat. No mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, he wolfed the food down. It took him about four days. Took it. That Delta version was a little, usually when it's just a, when it was just a regular coronavirus, two days, they will. Yeah. Uh, but this one here took took like four days. But uh, he recovered. And then a couple of days later, he told me, man, my wife moving around. She ought to be it. 
And uh, both of them totally, the whole family totally, and his two daughters had it as well. They they all totally recovered. How do you feel like you, like like we take zinc and all kind of stuff. Zinc but too. We, I take zinc okay. too. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I do zinc. take vitamin D, but you're going to make me go back home oh, and look she and see go the, in. I'm not, I got to go look in the uh, oh, she go in and see how much, how many milligrams well, I'm taking. Don't, don't, don't listen to me. What you do it's is, have me is on go, it. go look up Dr. Leslie Ray Matthews mm -hmm. and see who he is. And and then get your information directly from him. <laughs> right, I know that's right, man. <laughs> say, man. So, what would you say to the younger you, man? If you could go back before you even was talking to the uh, guy that sold dope, asking his opinion, how how would you? Would, what would you say to yourself to change your narrative or to 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 get yourself prepared for where you're headed? Well, you know, usually I don't go back. I know in life, you know, whatever it is, it is. It ain't going to change, change it anyway. History. But what I do is those steps that I missed. I start to do them right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Hey, so, so, so what I would do is exactly what I'm doing right now. Let myself know you can run with doctors. You can hang out with doctors. You know, during the pandemic, I was hanging out with two of the coldest black doctors in the world on the, over the telephone, though. Yeah. Because I'm trying to get him to the White House. Yeah. I'm trying to get everybody to know, like, look, this dude got the answers. You know, wow. he, he one of the dudes who, who, who killed SARS and, in the yeah. first coronavirus. Wow. Y'all need him up there with y'all. You know, uh, I call Congress people and uh, pastors and like, man, you need to get in touch with Governor Newsom. Yeah. Can you get Newsom on the phone? And, and, and they just didn't believe it. I thought, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't trust Will. So I'm thinking they don't have no good agenda for us. I'm thinking the health, you know, creating sickness is something that the health uh, department, they thrive off of. And that may be a negative way to look at it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's the case, but uh, I know that they're. Do you think some of them do it? Now, come on, now they they could, but but even if even if they don't, you know, like I don't I don't really. I know that they're choosing the wrong two doors. They okay. picking from the wrong doors. They are not picking from that door that they don't know about. You know, uh, um, they're not being innovative. You know, they're not being creative. Yeah. So. Uh, it could just be out of ignorance, you know. They could be doing this stuff out of out of just straight mm -hmm. ignorance, numbness. You know, Doc told me a lot of them when they was going to school, they was getting drunk. <laughs> so that, that God said he didn't have no he didn't have no rich parents to pay his way through. You know, he can go and pay the teachers. He said he had to study. Yeah, but he said a lot of his classmates was getting drunk. Mm -hmm. and, and, and doing all kind of other stuff, having party and rages and all kind of stuff when he was studying. So yeah. sometimes they just don't know. You know, they they, they, they got that piece of paper, but it, it, it wasn't really earned. <laughs> <laughs> man, you really, know, you man. buy that paper. That you, hey, you sell you a piece of that paper with, <laughs> with all the certificates and everything, stamped and all that. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you think? And I'm, I'm gonna let it go after this. But you think? Um, so when you marketing now, are you trying to get on the TVs or it's TV kind of? You know, it's not the thing like it used to be because so many people on this right here. Um, how do you how do you market now versus? Before you were locked up, you didn't even it wasn't even a marketing thing. But how do you market what you what you're trying to get out there? Well, I use the internet. I use <clears throat> podcasting like this here. You know, okay, I, I try to do as many of these as I can. You know, I've done these three or four in one day. Really? Yeah, yeah. I go to bookstores. Um, you stay busy. I stay busy. I, I stay busy. Right now, I go to dispensaries. You know, I'm uh, four twenty. I did four dispensaries mm -hmm. in one day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, That's crazy. So, so, so I get out there and market. I use I use Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I use other people's platforms. You know, uh, uh, out of all the avenues that you do use, which one you think is the most beneficial that has reached reached up, you know, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people? I don't know. It, it's it's a combination yeah. of everything. You know, okay. if if I didn't hit the streets, you know, and do what I do on the streets, my Instagram wouldn't be as effective. Facebook right. wouldn't be as effective as it is, but when you mix the the, the the street promotion with the with the internet internet promotion, it it all it elevates each other. So, yeah. And going back to your movie, I just had one more question about that. Who would play your role? Uh, I ain't supposed to say that. Kim Hardy get mad when when I, <laughs> when I start talking about people playing my role. Because um, I'm just curious to know who would play you. I don't know. I I I I, I like a couple people, but 
you know, it's getting close now, and I know she really would get mad if I called out a name right now. She'd say, please, when you do your interviews, don't say who you want to play your role, will you please? <laughs> so I guess I don't know if that gives her bargaining power or 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 what. But she she's really against it. And, and, you know, when she took on the role as casting director and producer, you know, I told her I would let her do the thing right. and I wouldn't be trying to yeah, to, to run the whole show. You know, the white guys, when, when I went and met her with all the, all the big wigs, because, you know, I met the first, four biggest uh, guys in Hollywood. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, yeah, I had meetings with the four biggest guys. If you see some mm-hmm. on TV, one of them did it. Wow. And one of the things that they said that they thought I would do is that I would uh, put all my friends in the roles and, you know, my brother would be directing and my sister would be producing. <laughs> you know, my nephew, he would be the main actor. Uh-uh. And, you know, they had me twisted. So uh, one of the things that it's I said. It's about business. It's not about all of that. But they don't know that. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't. They didn't really know me. Mm-hmm. That's why they slipped on this movie. And that's why I went to do a billion dollars at the box office. The biggest movie ever. Mm-hmm. Nigga ever came out. They were like, man, we missed a good one. Yeah, he was right there in my office. I talked to him. I knew him. <laughs> I love the way you reach though, because you don't think small at all. It's all the way or nothing. That's the way I do it as yeah. well. And wow. don't let anything discourage you. Just because you hear a no over here, you're like, okay, watch, I'm going to show you. Man, exactly. Man, so you and are uh, you and Jay Prince friends? I'm a Texas guy. Yeah, we friends. Okay, I figured that. I mentioned him in boxing a while ago. I was going. That was one of the things I wanted to ask. Yeah. yeah how did you? How did you guys? I've been knowing Jay a long time. Okay. Forty yeah. years, maybe. Forty years. That's Forty a, years. Wow. How did y'all meet? No, uh, we met in the studio. Okay. You you, what do you do with music? Mm, I'm I'm gonna do some music stuff too. <laughs> he missing. What what category of life don't you deal <laughs> with? Missing. Well, you know what Louis Farrakhan told me when I met him. What did he say? He said anything that black people in get into it. I got right now. I got one of the sharpest technology kids, eighteen years old, Google certified. Uh, um. Google, Apple, he, like four companies. Crisco, he, he, he's certified. And he's only 18 years old. Well, I, that made me think about Nipsey because Nipsey said he had some kid that was smart in technology. Yeah, I tried to get him too. You did? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you that. What, what about when Nipsey passed away, being out here in LA, what did that do to the city? And uh, yeah, what did that do to how How's how it did different? It you? Yeah. Uh, it's a couple of questions. It really, really didn't. Uh, much. I mean, you know, me and Nipsey was cool, but we didn't have a personal relationship. Okay. Yeah. We weren't, you know, wasn't like he was one of my guys and nothing mm-hmm. like that there. So, it, I mean, you know, brothers in LA get killed all the time. All the time. You know, so I feel bad for all of them. You know, I saw a guy get shot yesterday. Mm. Like, yesterday? Yeah, we was on the tennis court at the park and the guy shot a guy right next to the park. I felt the same way about that guy you know, that I felt about Nipsey. I don't care about the celebrity status, you know. You, right. I'm not impressed with that, you know. Wow. Your name could be Michael Jackson or whoever to me. You, you a know. man is a man. A yeah, brother you, is a brother. You put your pants on one leg at a time when you jump up in them. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, I want to know, um, do you know any of any successful drug dealers that have never been caught that can, because the reason why I'm asking this, I always say, okay, just like going back to what I was saying, like if you start off in this business and yes, you make it a lot of money, why not invest it and turn it into something legal? Because people always feel like this life is I'm going to either end up dead or in prison. That's what comes with the life. That's what I've always heard. And I'm like, OK, so why not switch it and make it where it's something that you can live off for the rest of your life? It's and hard. Not- it's hard to do that. It's hard. It's 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 been but some to make it. But is there anybody who? There's some to make it. You know, okay. I had guys that that they didn't get rich, but you know, they were rich in the dough game, but they quit before they went it. to jail. Okay. But, but they wind up, you know, money wind up going away because they don't really know. We we haven't been really taught about money. Blacks haven't really been taught about money. And that's that that's the thing. I would love to see someone. And we were talking about that the other day, and we were saying he was saying, or that. These young kids, when they're doing their thing in the streets, they're not going to listen, no matter what, because they have that money and they nobody listen. can they tell them anything. To, they listen to some people. Because in my mind, I'm like, if someone can step up <coughs> and teach some of these kids in the street, yes, they're making a lot of money, but invest this money because there's going to come a time when you might lose it all. So instead of losing it all, do this. Educate them because knowledge but is power. But you got that. You got that now. That's what I do. 
Okay. Y'all yeah. ready, man. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much for coming on the show, man. Thank y'all for having me on. Man, man. it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out. Boss.